the original DF64 showed up on the copy scene at the peak of niche mania. Filling the vacuum that niche created with the massive amount of positive press and giveaways, but a failure to produce grinders fast enough to keep up with the demand. Now, we can sit here and discuss issues like supply chains and parts availability, but that's old news. The new news is the DF64's popularity has spurred an entirely new line of grinders. Like the electronic dosing DF64E, the up-and-coming big boy, the DF83, and the topic of today's video, the DF64P. And now with the whole niche killer angle completely beaten to death here on YouTube, and the fact that the P in its name stands for premium, it seems like a more apt comparison would be with the Legome P64. So in this video, we'll get into the DF64P's design, differences, performance, and of course, a head-to-head -head with the significantly more expensive Legome P64. Of course, and as I always do, in the spirit of full disclosure, me Coffee sent me this grinder without the expectation or participation in the content of this review, and they've only asked that I supply a link to them if after watching this video you're interested in learning more or picking one up for yourself. But that brings me to the actual sponsor of this video, NordVPN. For a lot of us, coffee shops have become a de facto office, as working remotely has grown in popularity over the last few years. But there's one thing that many of us don't even consider, and that's their Wi-Fi security. A spoofed mobile network that looks like it belongs to the cafe can easily gain access to your data, acting as a middleman. But NordVPN can help protect you with encryption no matter where you are, or how secure the network you connect to is. With the ease of just one click or even automatically, NordVPN can connect to over 5,600 servers in 59 countries with the fastest speeds on up to six different devices. You can snag the exclusive NordVPN deal at nordvpn.com slash Prometheus. It's risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. Plus, you can get a huge discount on the purchase of a two-year plan, plus four additional months for free. As you likely already know, online security has never been more important, so now's a great time to jump on this deal. Thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to coffee. To be completely fair, no single dose grinders are breaking the mold in how they're laid out and designed. But the DF64P does have a couple of unique features that sets it apart from the pack. So as always, a quick overview is worthwhile. Starting from the top, it has a few options for its hopper layout. If you prefer the clean look, you can go with the plain wood cap. If your priority is to minimize retained grinds, you can go with the bellows. And if you're all about the hot start, you can use the anti-popcorning hopper. Doing the grinding is a pair of 64mm Ital Mill titanium coated flat burrs, paired with a 250 watt motor, spinning at 1400 RPM. Working our way down, the majority of the body is made of coated, anodized aluminum. About midway down, you've got the dosing chute and forks, that fit both the 58mm portafilter and the included dosing cup. And finally, just above the base sits one of the most unique features on the grinder, its adjustment knob. This moves the bottom burrs up and down, finer and coarser respectively, as opposed to most grinders that adjust the top fixed burr while the bottom set rotate. Much like I mentioned in the overview section, the workflow of the DF64P isn't all that different from other grinders in the single dosing lower tension market. You know the drill, beans go in, grinds come out. But there is one point that can slightly change its workflow and retention performance, and that all depends on your preferred hopper layout. Like I mentioned earlier, it gives you the ability to grind with or without a hot start, and also with or without a bellows. But these differences aren't massive. With retained grinds being a whole 0.1 gram difference on average, that's 0.2 with and 0.3 without using the bellows and purely utilizing the whipping motion of the burrs. And of course, that aforementioned burr speed, as you'd expect, results in some pretty quick grinding, pumping out roughly one gram per second. Also, I may have heard through the grapevine that the original DF64 had some clumping and clogging issues. It appears the newly designed dosing chute and declumper are working pretty flawlessly, as the grinds coming out are focused, fluffed up, and clump free. Of course, you can choose to grind into the dosing cup or directly into the portafilter, which is what I often opt for, as it removes an entire step from the espresso process. And speaking of espresso, and probably most importantly, the DF64 produces quality cups both from the flavor and extraction perspectives. 
On a variety of coffees and espresso styles, the shots I tested were balanced, full-bodied, and tasty, and essentially what you would and should expect from a grinder in this price point. And lastly, when it comes to cleaning or swapping burr sets, access is as simple as removing two bolts, taking off the top cap, and you're in. If you've been following the grinder sagas of YouTube, it's likely you've seen the term niche killer plastered all over thumbnails of the DF64. But with the release of this premium version, the comparison that makes the most sense to me is the P64. Their biggest difference is the price tag, with the P64 coming in at $1800 and the DF64P at a reasonable, by comparison, $470. From there, the P64 is also an all-around grinder, meaning it can be used with a wide variety of brew methods, but the DF64P is advertised as espresso only. The P64 has a variable RPM motor from 300 to 1400, allowing for further exploration in dialing in, and the DF64P sits at a flat 1400. Beyond the RPM, the motors are a bit different. The P64 has a 300 watt brushless that are more sought after for their reliability, longevity, and quietness. And the 64P has a 250 watt brushed motor. And from there, these last three columns really drives home the similarities, with an aluminum body, 3 pounds difference in weight, and nearly identical retained grinds. Now, when you look at each grinder based on that list, what it really comes down to is specifics and personal preferences. But when it comes down to the coffee they produce, they're both very similar but also very different. So let me explain. With the same burrs installed, the SSP multi-purpose, and the Legome set to its max 1400 RPM to match the 64P, the grinders performed pretty much exactly the same. From the retention numbers all the way down to the espresso brewed. But what sets the P64 apart in the cup is its ability to reduce the burr speed. Which I did a full video on recently, so if you're curious, definitely check that one out for the full explanation. But the TLDR is, faster speeds create more fines, which increases sweetness and body, but slightly lowers extraction. And slower speeds boost clarity, and extracts just a little bit better. All of this takes dialing in to new levels, which may not be for everyone, as I said in my full review of the P64. So essentially, between these two grinders, you'll need to decide what really matters to you, because beyond some motor and material differences, the thing you can taste between these two is the burr speed. Even with premium being the keyword that sets the DF64 apart from the DF64P, there are some quirks and downsides worth noting, starting with what I would consider the main one, it's kinda loud. The motor isn't bad on its own, but once coffee joins the equation, the volume could be a turnoff for those who are looking for early morning coffee brewing tranquility. Also, the forks are held on by a single bolt, and tend to loosen over time, especially when using heavy portafilters. And speaking of the forks, the rubber stoppers are a nice touch to hold things tight and reduce vibration, but they easily rip after very little use. And last, but certainly not least, for a premium option grinder, I'd expect the accessories to feel premium as well. For example, the included dosing cup is plastic. They make a metal version, but it's a paid add-on and the dosing funnel for portafilters is a little odd with its design. It has lips on both sides that catch grinds and produce an uneven bed. With this being my first foray into any grinder from the DF line, I wasn't 100% sure what to expect, and it seems the community's response has been sort of hot and cold, and some just seem really eager to end the reign of the niche. But it seems the DF64P is a worthwhile upgrade from its predecessor, with meaningful upgrades inside and out, lending to its premium namesake. Considering its performance and general fit and finish, it does seem like a bargain. But unsurprisingly, I still do feel like the P64 ranks higher in its build, its feel, its adjustability, yet only you can decide if that's all worth $1300 difference in price. Plus, with the DF64S in the pipeline featuring a brushless motor and RPM adjustment, it feels like the gap is continuing to close. And I think the production of a premium version is a smart move, but is rendered slightly less effective, being designed for espresso only. Maybe that was intentional so it didn't cannibalize the sales of the original DF64, but who knows. And with all that said, I think it's time I wrap this one up and pass the conversation on to you. What are your thoughts on the DF line of grinders? And if you've had one for a while, I'd love to hear your thoughts on them over time. 
Also, do you think the comparison with the niche is still relevant today? Drop your answers to those questions and any others you may have in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see y'all next week. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Check out my Instagram at Spromethius for content throughout the week, my blog at Spromethius.com, my coffee at LittleGiant.coffee, and as always, stay caffeinated. Pony boy.